Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week, we're talking about Season 4, Episode 15. Believe it or not, we're more than halfway through. There's only 22 episodes in Season 4. We're going downhill right now to the end of Season (laughs) 4. A lot of things are going downhill. (laughs) (laughs) This episode is titled Indian Wars. It originally premiered on February 26, 1988. Now, here's what's going to get a little weird about who the writers were, and I'm going to let you come to your own conclusions on the quality of writing that happened for it. It was written by Frank Coffey and Carl Waldman. It was the only episode they ever wrote, but it was a group of people who wrote the teleplay, including Michael Duggan, who wrote Baby Blues, Lend Me an Ear, Viking Bikers, Big Thaw, Peter Lance, who wrote Rising Sun of Death, Baseballs of Death, and Robert Palm, who wrote Like a Hurricane. So there was three teleplay writers. And this is the only episode that the two main writers wrote. It kind of feels like the teleplay writers took this away from them. Yeah, it kind of feels like they <laughs> changed it over. Like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Like, the crap, guys. We're stuck with this this week. Okay. Get all the vice veteran tele- uh, writers <laughs> together so we can try and fix this. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. There was something seriously wrong when the screenplay came down to the teleplay writers. Like, no, 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 no. No, we're not having We're not this. doing this. <laughs> Do you think they just read it and was like, there's way too much white devil stuff in here. Let's cross <laughs> this one out. Let's cross this one out. It is directed by Leoni Chasso. Now, hey, you guys know that name well. A little Miss Dangerous, Kill Shot, Better Living Through Chemistry, Rising Son of Death. Unfortunately for Leon, this is the last episode he will direct for Miami Vice. Some really good ones in there. Because he got fired. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he had some he had some good episodes. They're like, look, you did Rising Son of Death. We're gonna give you another shot. And he goes, Indian War. So like, look, you gotta get out. Yeah, that's it. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John. I did a quick look and I saw one band that I'm starting to know really well. Yeah, we get Hawaiian Chants by Yellow. You remember Yellow, the Swiss Electronica Techno. Pop band made up of Dieter Meyer, who was a millionaire industrialist, and Boris Blank. And for a while, Carlos Brown, who I even talked about him, even though he left the band in 83. I've talked about <laughs> all of these people because they've appeared in the episode Kill Shot, Contempt of Court, The Rising Sun. And finally, this episode, which will be their last, thankfully. Ah, uh, I'm sad to see Yellow go. I'm just getting so used to seeing him every six or eight episodes or so. We will say adieu to Yellow. And the main thing I'm just going to talk about with Yellow, I already kind of talked about how the band was to, to recap for the four music segments. Uh, Carlos Peron and Boris Blank founded the group in 1979. They then recruited Dieter Meyer, who is a millionaire and realist and gambler, professional gambler, to be their lead singer. And eventually Perone would leave, Dieter and Blank would continue to make music, and the biggest thing that they ever, ever, ever did was their 1985 hit, Oh Yeah, which was used in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Secrets of Success, American Pie Presents the Book of Love, A9, like a bunch of other movies. It's the theme song for Duff Man and the Simpsons. (laughs) So used in very many Twix commercials in the 90s. You know, (laughs) oh yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that was them. That's their claim to fame. So that and Miami Vice, apparently. They're all over the damn music. Now that we say goodbye, Peter and Boris, let's talk about... God's Gift, The Silencers. The Silencers were formed in 1986. They are, they were a Scottish new wave band, and they were kind of like the... We've had a few of these bands featured before where they were like the Flogging Molly, Dropkick Murphys, where they used some of the Celtic instruments in more of like a new wave punk kind of setup sound. The Silencers were comprised of Jimmy O'Neill on vocals, Cha Burns on guitar, Martin Hanlon on drums, and Joseph Donnelly on bass. The band was founded by O'Neill and Burns, who were former members of the Scottish punk band Fingerprints from 1979 to 85. I think they had three albums or so. Their first single, Painted Moon, was a minor international hit, which was released on their first album, A Letter from St. Paul. 
and it included another minor hit called Icy Red. Their success kind of peaked by about album number three. By the time they put out Dance to the Holy Man, which would uh, be, which would chart as a top 40 hit in the United Kingdom, and would probably be like the highest chopping hurting album of theirs, they would actually lose two of the band members. Uh, Hanlon and Donnie would leave the band, forcing them to be replaced to finish recording the album. And from there, it's just kind of every couple albums, someone would leave and they'd have to replace them. But Burns and O'Neill pretty much stayed throughout. Throughout the 90s, they, they were still somewhat critically acclaimed, but they struggled with distribution. So they really didn't get didn't chart or sell the amount of records probably they could have had they had better representation. So, and, and then as times changed and as band members changed, somewhere around the mid 90s, O'Neill's daughter, Aurora, would actually join the band and start performing vocals on albums too. They would continue recording until the early 2000s. Burns would die of lung cancer in 2007, and uh, the last mm. the last album they would release would be in 2008, at least as of right now. Mm. You're right that we have had a few of these bands too, where it's like this era of punk, maybe I guess you might call it, where they take some classic instruments and then they put a new spin on it. And a lot of them from that Northern Europe area, too. Yeah, you know, and just like at the, with this band, it very much reminded me of the bands like Flogging Molly and Dropkick Murphys. They don't dominate the charts, but they are consistently, they've been popular for over a decade. And this band was very much the same way. Like, they were popular through the 80s and 90s. They just weren't well distributed. They weren't mainstream popular, but they had that blend of like punk and folk music, like traditional Ir Irish or Scottish, in this case, folk music. They're the kind of band where you would see signs for them, like, I have no idea who that is. And then you go walk by the, the club and uh, it's like sold out. And there's people out on the street like, oh, wow, there's someone big playing, uh -huh. I guess. <laughs> for the most part, their history is kind of vanilla because it's mostly just like, they released this album and then this album. And it's kind of a short list because they really, they peaked at the end of the 80s around their third album. And much of the music market shifted in the 90s toward grunge. And so they were they were kind of an outlier, they, even though they still had someone following. What I did find interesting was that the other band names they considered, other than the Silencers, they considered my Granny's Green Chair and my favorite, <laughs> the Hot Dog from Hell. <laughs> are there hot dogs from heaven? Like, is there such a thing? Yeah. Not all hot dogs are from hell. It's a, let's ask oh, Mitt no. Romney. He says hot dogs is favorite <laughs> meat. <laughs> <laughs> of, of course there are hot dogs in from heaven, from 7-Eleven. <laughs> 7-Eleven, you can mail that check. It's a P.O. Box 749. <laughs> I, I will also be okay with him in hot dogs. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go give our final thoughts on this episode. We had a really good one or one that we really loved last week. We also had some stinkers earlier. I'm really interested to see where everyone lies on this episode. And that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Go With The Heat. We would love to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. Check out that website, go with the heat.com. You can find all of the other ways to contact us YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. I think we even have a Tumblr if that's still a thing. You can contact us in all of those places. We would love to hear from you. Let us know what your thoughts are on this episode. This is back to back episodes in season four that we've really enjoyed. That we thought were really good. Let us know what your thoughts are on this episode. Like I mentioned, that website, go with the heat.com. Be sure to go check that out. Go check out the ways that you can support us. Support number one, we would love to get from you. Contact us. We want to hear from you and other Vice fans out there. We want to talk to you. We want to see what your thoughts are on this episode. So please, if you're going to support us, please contact us. Number two way to support us, go to your podcast, your platform of choice. Give us five stars. Go ahead. It's not hurting anyone. Go ahead and just give us five stars. No one will even know I asked you to do it. Just give us five stars, but don't leave a review. No one ever reads the reviews. Go in there in the reviews if it makes you put in a review and write Melendez's backstory. <laughs> Tell us why Melendez is such an evil person and why everyone's afraid of him. That is going to do it for us this week. Be sure to check out that Patreon, patreon.com slash go with the heat. 
That's the last way that if you're looking for a way to support us, we'd enjoy a couple nickels. If you want to throw us some nickels, throw us some nickels. We'll take as little as a nickel. You got a nickel? Give us a nickel. I want your nickels. Go to patreon.com slash go with the heat. We're saving up for our own bull semen. (laughs) That is going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, pal.